Okay, we're now in the last group of design patterns, object-oriented design patterns, and those are the creational patterns. So how do we go about creating instances? And the first one we will discuss is the so-called singleton pattern, which is all about creating a single instance of something. And that's often the case if you want to control something. So you want to make sure there's, for example, only one endpoint of a component, only one interface that communicates with other components. You don't want to have this double because they might have access to a restricted resource. For example, if a component is in the network, uh, they have to listen, they have to react to any kind of calls that come at a certain address. And at this address, it can only be one uh, component, one interface at a time. So if you would have multiple of these controllers, they would probably uh, kind of restrict themselves in the access. Or you have access to a memory location and only one at a time can read or write. That's when you want to uh, maybe consider a singleton. Now, there's a lot of stuff going on here, even though it looks very simple. Uh, and I'll walk you through that. So first of all, uh, you should notice that the instance of a singleton, so this class has an instance of itself, but this is a class attribute. So there's only one of these for all the classes, and even if you don't have an instance of singleton, this uh, attribute exists for the class. So that's, for example, static in many programming languages. The same goes for the method. The getInstance method that returns a singleton is also a class method. It's static. Uh, you can call it even if there is no instance. And then the, uh, the third thing that's going on here is the constructor. The constructor of the singleton is private. So uh, in most programming languages, that means you cannot call this, which means you cannot create a new instance by, for example, doing new singleton. Uh, this would, in most programming languages, not be possible because the singleton constructor is private. Um, the way this works is that instead you call get instance. So for example, in programming languages like Java, this would look like singleton with a large s dot get instance. Uh, so you just call it on the class level without creating a, a, uh, a new object. And this one will then return you an object. And the way it works is simply that this is a class method. It checks whether the class attribute instance, whether this one is set already. Uh, if it's not, for example, if it's null or undefined, again, depending on the programming language, if it's not, then it calls the constructor. And it, ca it can call the constructor because uh, it's private, it's within the class. So this method is actually able to create a new instance. Uh, this method is able to call a new singleton. So if the instance is undefined, it calls this method, it gets a new instance, it returns it. If this one is not undefined, it simply returns the existing instance. So that way it makes sure that the first time this one is called, we are creating one and afterwards we're just returning it. There's always just one. Um, now I said you might want to consider this and that's because there is a lot of criticism surrounding the singleton pattern. So I think it's important to discuss that here. I said before, most patterns change over time or they might not be appropriate anymore. They might be controversial. This is definitely one of them. And the reason is, uh, well, manifold. There are many reasons for this. First of all, one issue we have here is actually that we are violating the single responsibility because uh, what the singleton pattern does is actually two things. It makes sure there's only one instance, but it also provides a global access to, for example, this, well, to the singleton instance, to the controller. So it actually has two responsibilities. Uh, it violates single responsibilities. The other thing is that this is very difficult to test. It has an own state, so the state depends on whether the method has been called or not, and uh, depending on what other methods this might have, the, the, the state changes over time, and stateful classes are generally not that easy to test. Uh, so that's a tricky thing here. Testing a singleton is hard. Uh, instance uh, access to restricted resources that I have mentioned as, as one of the reasons why you want to use this might be possible through other ways. So uh, it's not ideal to have a singleton if you can avoid it. Uh, and a suggestion is very often to say, well, instead of the singleton, maybe use something like dependency injection. Uh, so make sure if you have to have something that has a state, just provide the state by, uh, by a means of parameters, for example, to the constructor instead of uh, implementing a singleton. So uh, 
it depends a bit on the use case that you're having, but it's not always necessary to use this. And if you can avoid it, you should probably, because then you don't have to test this anyhow. Okay, so that's the singleton. Uh, the next and the last pattern we'll go through in, in this module is the factory pattern, which is a common way of, as the name suggests, creating instances of the same thing. 